Welcome guys, I'm Exhausta and this is the third follow-up video to my Magic Find guide series. In this episode I'm gonna reveal my Magic Find build for Standard. If you are interested in the League Magic Find build, please check the previous episode. Now, I know what you're thinking. Standard is boring, no new content, economy is stale, but please, stick with me. I assure you that putting together and min-maxing a Magic Find build in Standard was by far the best experience I had in PoE as a player. The main reason is that legacy items are so incredibly powerful for Magic Find. First off, you can trash your shitty unique items in the bin, no more Sadima Statch, no more Goldwyrm, and you can replace all of those items with fully crafted rares with a legacy modifier 20% increased item quantity. And if you really want to go wild, with full magic find you can reach crazy numbers, like 250% item quantity and 1000 item rarity. Second point, magic find builds are inherently less powerful than other builds, so having access to overpowered legacy gear really helps. For this reason, if you invest a lot in your legacy magic find build, you will be able to destroy all content in the game, including 100% delirium, juiced maps, as well as uber bosses without an arbot, as a completely solo player. Now, last but not least, there are fewer players farming maps in standard, so many T1, T2 uniques generally sell for more. T0 uniques are a different story because Headhunter and Mageblood and Mageblood are quite expensive in League since demand significantly exceeds the offer. In summary, my recommendation is if you really loved playing a Magic Find build in a temporary league, then give Standard a try to unlock the full potential of Magic Find. And if you're not convinced yet, here is a full showcase of a super high budget Magic Find build with fully mirrored gear in standard. As you can see, uh, we are playing a physical conversion build with Tornado Shot as a dead eye, and the damage is quite ridiculous. I mean, against Uber Pinnacle bosses, you can get more than 100 million DPS with 100% crit chance, 13 projectiles, and I know what you're thinking, uh, why would you boss on a magic find build? Well, because you can. With this build you can definitely kill bosses with ease. And if you swap in item quantity and item rarity gems, you can go up to 200 item quantity and 650 rarity. Now you can go even higher as I told before with a culling magic find setup, but that's not really something that you are going to do as a solo player. As for the fences, this build is not the tankiest in the world, you are going to be hit heavily by some bosses and die sometime, but the fences overall are quite decent. 84% elemental res with legacy divination distillate, 75% chaos res, 70% fizz damage mitigation, and also some nice utility like immunity to ailments uh, thanks to purity of ailments, uh, perma flask uptime, I will explain how to do that later. If you have a legacy winter, you can have instant life and mana leech, which is incredibly powerful. And this character moves really fast, 300 plus movement speed with perma loud, rage and frenzy charges. So yeah, that's gonna be good. Now, full disclaimer, while showcasing the build, I'm going to recommend many mirror service items for the absolute magic find fanatics. You can totally achieve good results without mirror tier items, and I myself don't have all the mirrored gear I've listed in this video. However, since we are in standard, I just want to give you aspirational gear to look for and try to create what I think is the best possible Magic Find build in the game right now. And to be fair towards every mirror service shop, I will try to discuss as many options as possible according to my knowledge, along with mirror fees in the most transparent way possible. If you have fair criticism about my choices, feel free to message me in the comments. That said, 
how should you plan your investments in a Magic Find build? Well, if you are very poor, you need to start from a non-Magic Find Ranger Bow build, and then little by little you can start putting some low-budget Magic Find gear into the character. Check my previous video on of the Magic Find Guide series for budget options. Remember that you can play with an armor bot to increase both your damage and survivability if you can't really get better items. If you are instead a rich Giga Chad standard player, you should start your Magic Fight adventure by playing uh, with a big initial investment. I'd say something like 4 5 mirrors. That sounds like a lot and it is, but that's what I did when I started. Uh, after that, just play the game, farm the currency for your next upgrade, and assuming you're, assuming you're gaining something like 20-25 devices per hour, which is very realistic for a Magic Find building standard, um, if you put in just 3 hours per day, without no lifing at all, you are going to get, if according to the math, if I'm not wrong, 50 mirrors in a year. Maybe you are skeptical about these numbers, totally understandable, but even if you get way less than that, like, I don't know, 10, 20 mirrors in a year, that's already more than enough to build a GG Magic Find build that clears most content, bosses included. Magic Find, uh, in a way, is a bit like Aura Stackers. They are very long-term project which require dedication, willpower, but they really, really pay off. So let's finally introduce the gear and uh, uh, after watching this video remember that you can uh, check again all that you need to know inside my Magic Find Academy strategy guide. Uh, there is uh, an entire explanation about the Magic Find build in, in, extremely in extreme detail and uh, there are also handy trade links so that you can buy whatever you need uh, with ease without losing much time. Then. Uh, about the items. Um, the first item that you want to mirror is definitely the bow. There are basically two types of bows, the physical ones and the elemental ones. Uh, I actually think that physical conversion builds are much much better than elemental builds right now, but if you already have some piece of gear for let's say elemental builds, you should go for them. They are also very strong. Uh, my personal choice was Storm Breeds. There is another bow that was recently crafted from TFT, which would be Storm Rain. As you can see, the price tag is very different. We have uh, 1 mirror and 200 divine fee for Storm Breeds, which is already a lot. And then you have 2 mirrors and 400 divines from TFT. Now, I want to stress the fact that these are very expensive items to craft, so don't blame these guys for the fee. Uh, it's just how it is. They are very hard to craft. Um, Storm Rain is about 10% um, better than Storm Breeds, so keep that in mind uh, and uh, choose whatever you prefer based on your budget. If you want to run uh, a Magic Find build with an Aura Bot, you might want to uh, go a step further and get some nice quantity and rarity from a Legacy Wind Reaper. And uh, Legacy Wind Reaper comes with 25% quantity instead of 15 and 50% rarity instead of 25 rarity. Now, we generally use um, the interrogation and uh, so we can't frozen, we can freeze or shock enemies. If you want to use Legacy Wind Reaper, you should drop the interrogation. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, Legacy Wind Reaper is rather expensive, but if your balls are made of fucking titanium, you can consider corrupting this item or simply buying an already corrupted variant uh, to get some very nice implicits uh, like Culling Strike, Plus One Arrow, Fork, those are very good. Then let's go to the Quivers. Uh, quivers are another very important piece of gear. Uh, all of these quivers that I show are beautiful piece of crafts and the first one is Honor Spire. This is the strongest quiver at the moment with 70% global crit multi and uh, a whole lot of projectile speed which becomes projectile damage due to the bow mastery. Um, it comes with plus two arrows which is legacy by the way because uh, now from 
3.21, you can't roll plus one arrow or as synthesized implicit. Gold barb is pretty similar through Honor Spire. There are a couple differences. Uh, basically, you have more crit chance, uh, but uh, you don't have the projectile speed, and uh, instead you get frenzy charges on critical strike. Now, you can get frenzy charge quite easily with blood rage or anomalous blood rage, but if you want to get them without blood rage, because you dislike the idea to get that much the gen on your life, sure, mm, go for it. Um, then we have for elemental builds, Rough Spear. Uh, it's basically the same as Honor Spire and Gold Barb, uh, just uh, flat lightning damage instead of physical damage. As for the belt, uh, that's the Headhunter. That's a pretty obvious inclusion in the build. Uh, Headhunter is a beast for mapping. And uh, since we are in standard and we want to flex, uh, I recommend to corrupt this item to get something like item rarity, crit multi, hatred effect, or attack speed. Uh, before doing so, though, uh, make sure to use the intrinsic catalyst to get uh, the most out of the attributes on the belt. Uh, it's worth mentioning that a dunter is obviously not the best choice when it comes to bossing, so if you like to play boss as well, um, Maybe you should craft your own rare belt and uh, remember to put some strength on it because you'll need it to uh, cap your attribute requirements. Uh, next on the list, the body armor. Now, uh, uh, again, two options. Uh, the first one is from the TFT shop, Tempest Mantle. Uh, I really like this chest because it provides socketed attacks at minus 15 to total mana cost and also level 1 MAME, which adds a whole lot of damage. Uh, it has the uh, Legacy Craft, you can apply an additional curse, and 25% increased effect of non-curse auras from your skills, which, if I recall correctly, is exclusive to Recombinators. The implicits are also very powerful. Flask applied to you have 17% uh, increased effect, and Daytrade has 30% increased aura effect. Personally, I am not... To, um, I, I don't agree with the enchant here. I think that getting plus one to strength or to another attribute you need is more important, but that's really up to you. Uh, for the elemental build, I recommend getting Kraken Shroud. Um, and uh, as you can notice, there is something very unique about this, this body armor. Socket gems are supported by level 20 item rarity. Uh, and attacks have plus 2% critical strike chance. To be honest, this is not an extremely expensive craft. You can create this yourself by just uh, merging together with Awakening Orb two elevated magic items with uh, the elevated mods. Socketed gems are supported by level 20 rarity and attacks have plus 2% critical strike chance. You can then get, you can apply an additional curse by just uh, rerolling caster with harvest. It's rather straightforward. And uh, otherwise, uh, if you want to maximize your magic find uh, with a culling build, consider using Grid's Embrace, which is also the basic choice in League, uh, so that you can get 15% quantity and up to 50% rarity of items found. Again, make sure to corrupt your items with some nice plus one level two gems, increased damage, plus one to maximum resistance and such. For the amulet, you want either Rift Locket or Bramble Medallion. These synthesized amulets both come with Legacy Crit Multi, 70% which becomes 84 with the Critical Catalysts. Uh, you get, of course, 20% quantity, 54 rarity and the life. Uh, the difference is basically in the implicits. Uh, TFT has better implicits with 3% more multi, 6% increased maximum life. And so, yeah, there is a little difference there. Uh, as for the anoint, I personally recommend Sovereignty uh, if you want to run a lot of auras. Tenacity is also good, but uh, uh, it really depends on your build choices, to be honest. If you are on a let's say budget, it's not really a budget option, it's more like a cheaper way to get a very nice item, uh, you can use uh, a magic base 
with 20% quantity and life. There were so many of them around on the market when uh, they were still unnerved. Uh, after Ritual League, they nerfed the splitting beast method, so you couldn't dupe these uh, magic bases anymore. And that's a real shame because it made it makes magic find cost more for everyone basically. Uh, the way to craft uh, an amulet with this with uh, this basis is just imprint the magic base by using crazy chimera, then use a regal orb, and if you like the mod that you came with, like I don't know, you got crit multi, crit chance, uh, a resistance you need. You can just multi-mod and uh, you're good to go. Otherwise, uh, you can simply imprint back and uh, use again the Crazy Crimeral uh, and the Regal, wait for a good mod and then finish the item. That's really up to you and uh, on how much you want to invest on this kind of way. About the rings, uh, Dreadloop is a great option to get uh, elemental weakness on hit and plenty of rarity. Mm, there is also Glyph Nail from the TFT Mirror Services shop, uh, which is very powerful because it provides uh, plus 9 to all attributes, which really helps. 19% uh, global crit multi implicit, and uh, again, a lot of rarity and item quantity. A bit of a shame is that as we use the interrogation, we don't really shatter enemies, so we don't get the bonus from this 36 crit multi. Uh, but uh, it's still nice to have if a meta changes and they somehow nerf the interrogation. So yeah, I still think it's the best option. If you want to craft your own items, just get a varile prismatic ring of amassment. And uh, as before for the amulet, you just need to imprint the base with crazy chimeral. Uh, use a regal orb, then uh, to get elemental weakness I recommend slamming an hunter exalted orb. If you don't need elemental weakness or if you already have it, just multi-mod the item once you get a decent regal. This item from the Igloo Mirror Service Shop is very nice. Uh, this is a very expensive helmet with tornado shot, fires two additional secondary projectiles, which is a mandatory enchantment for tornado shot. Um, it has three fractured modifiers, 10% increased mana reservation efficiency of skills, very good for this variant of my build, 20% uh, quantity, and uh, the Veiled exclusive 60% increased rarity of items dropped by slain rare or unique enemies. And uh, rare and unique enemies are really the monsters that drop the most, so that's very important to get 60% rarity on them. Uh, the implicits are from the Eldritch Influence. We get 12% increased mana reservation efficiency. Then you can get 26% reduced mana cost of attacks or elemental weakness effect. I think they are both very useful. Uh, there are some Fecund Lion Pelt of Amassment magic bases available on market, so you can also craft your helmet alone. Uh, the important thing is to get the Eldritch mods that I mentioned before, mana reservation uh, and mana cost. As for the gloves, uh, I recommend getting Chimeric Vice. Uh, these, glove, these gloves have a very smart design. Uh, there was this mod here, 30% increased rarity of items found during any flask effect, which was a very old modifier that is uh, uh, that that was first released, uh, if I recall correctly, in Warbands, which was a very, very old league. And uh, this modifier was very rare to find on the market. And the crafters in my shop basically decided to fracture this modifier along with 20 quantity and then craft 32 rarity of items found on it. Uh, having 62% rarity is very, very good in my opinion for a pair of gloves. Then you have the implicits, 70% increased effect of your marks is a lot of damage and uh, Rage is great because it um, allows for additional movement speed, additional damage. Uh, also, while you have Rage, you also have Intimidate and I'll show you why, why in a second when uh, we will check the um, passive tree. 
Again, you can just buy a magic base and craft your own gloves. Uh, remember to check for the best Eldritch Implicits, Mark Effect, Intimidate, Rage. And uh, if you can't get it already, um, additional fees conversion. Uh, these boots uh, are very, very nice. Pain Dash come with permanent onslaught, uh, about 50% about movement speed and 40% rarity of items found, and of course uh, the 20% quantity of items found. Uh, the Abyssal Socket is also very nice so that you can get a lot of damage from it. I think that these boots uh, are really, really good. Uh, make sure to get the 16% attack speed craft or the 10% damage penetration craft uh, if you are bossing a lot. Uh, you can ask the owner to change the enchantment uh, if you want. There are also here uh, magic bases that you can craft. Uh, the best Eldritch implicits, in my opinion, are action speed, physics extra damage. Uh, cooldown reduction for movement skills and uh, elemental avoidance if you can't get it with purity of elements. Uh, a very nice option for a culling magic find build uh, is uh, the gold worm, legacy gold worm, which came with 30% increased quantity of items found, which was I think the highest amount of quantity of items found uh, ever printed on any item. Um, we have several abyssal sockets in our items, uh, so you need some very nice searching guide jewel. And this jewel from TFT is practically perfect. You have uh, a bit of life, a lot of crit multi, up to 20%, and, uh, and like uh, 13 attack speed during those loud. That's a very nice jewel. As for the flasks, uh, these are probably some of the most expensive items in the build. Now, Dying Sun uh, is uh, extremely useful because it gives you two additional project types, which you really need. Then we have uh, the Legacy Taste of Hate. Uh, the, uh, this variant had 30% physical damage from hits taken as cold and gained 30% of physical damage as extra cold. Uh, nowadays, I think it's 20% of physical damage from hits taken and 20% of physical damage as extra cold. So again, that's a nice buff. Uh, then we have an insanely expensive flask, which is Vessel of Inktar. This casts multiple mirrors, I think two or three mirrors right now. Uh, the variant that I prefer is 20% of physical damage converted to lightning during effect. This flask is insane because it provides life and mana leech. And while it costs a lot, I think it's worth every single uh, piece of currency. Divination Distillate is uh, a corner piece of the build, and the Legacy variant is absolutely insane. This flask has been nerfed more times than, can, than can I, I can remember. Uh, right now it has only 12% quantity and 30% rarity, but back then it used to add 60% to all maximum elemental resistances, 25% increased quantity of items found, and up to 60% rarity of items found. That's really insane for a single item. And remember that this scales with flask effect, so you can get more maximum LRS and also an, in, an outrageous amount of quantity and rarity. Uh, an important thing about this flask is that you don't want to quality it. Putting some quality on it ruins the flask because you want to recover as few life as possible so that you your divination display doesn't stop working, you know? Then we have uh, the fifth option. So uh, the last slot for flasks is uh, rather flexible. You can use Quicksilver flask in most situations that gives you uh, a very high amount of movement speed with legacy 30% movement speed during effect. Uh, then you can use also gold flask with the legacy craft 30% increased rarity of items found. Make sure to get 25% increased effect on the flask uh, so that you can get the most out of the effect. Then you have the wise oak, uh, which is uh, a very powerful flask for bossing. The legacy variant comes with 20% uh, resistance penetration instead of 10 
and also 10% reduced damage taken of each element for which your uncapped elemental resistance is the lowest. Uh, with this flask, you want to, your elemental resistance seems to be perfectly balanced, and they normally are, uh, since we don't have uh, uneven elemental resistances on our gear. Make sure that your cluster's jewels don't contain uh, random elemental resistances, or you might be screwed up. Last variant, we have Rumi's Concussion. Uh, this legacy flask can provide up to 40% block attack damage and 20% chance to block spell damage. Increase that by flask effect and you are getting a lot of armor and a lot of chance to block. This is a very defensive option and I really recommend getting these uh, against Uber Elder or against uh, uh, the Eldritch bosses. Now the Cluster Jewels. Cluster Jewels are another very important piece for the build. You can craft these yourselves by just fracturing one of the mods and uh, crafting uh, the others by just uh, uh, using Harvest. Uh, the base Cluster Jewels should have uh, 12 passives and use the bow base. Uh, you are aiming for 35% increased effect of the small passives uh, life is pretty much mandatory, attack speed is the best damage you can get. And then I personally needed Chaos Res, so I put that there. Uh, but uh, if you need elemental resistances, that's also a great place to put. Mm, there are a lot of medium clusters in this build. Uh, the first one is Legacy, and it is 3% increased effect of non-course auras, which is now uh, uh, on which is now found on a small clusters. Um, in these medium clusters, you want to get Spiteful Presence and Uncompromising, which reduce the mana reservation uh, from Determination and Hatred. As for the other mods, you can get uh, Elemental Resistances, Archibus you might need, or Crit Multi. Another medium cluster is for Curses. Uh, again, this was nerfed, and now... Uh, uh, course clusters are on small clusters. Um, this medium cluster should come with Wish for Death. I recommend getting, uh, getting it fractured and then just craft random uh, mods such as uh, Homes Mark Notable, which is pretty good uh, because it provides 20% mark effect, uh, Crit Multiplier, LA and Chaos Res, or some Achibus like I did. Uh, for the last uh, medium cluster, we have um, the crit one. Uh, look for pressure points, precise retaliation. Those are extremely powerful because in total you get like 90% critical strike chance and 5% double damage on crit hit. These are very cheap to craft. Finally, uh, the medium cluster for flasks. This is optional and only good uh, if you are uh, if you want to maximize your magic find or if you're playing against bosses. Uh, the spiked concussion notable gives you increased flask effect and you also gain an increased amount of flask charges. These are the unique jewels that we are using in this build. There are a lot of unique jewels in this build. First, the interrogation that unlocks the Keystone Secrets of Suffering. Uh, what it does is it converts uh, free, Freeze, Shock and Ignite into a Brittle, Sapped and Scorch. Uh, brittle is the most powerful of these three ailments because it provides 6% base crit chance. Um, make sure to have enough elemental uh, ailment effect to get up to 6% or you will get a little less. Um, basically, chance is very useful for our build. Then we got Trade of Hope uh, with a massive ring. This is a very, very powerful jewel. Uh, I'll show you into my uh, passive tree what it looks like. Uh, you have this giant ring here, and inside you can find a lot of very powerful passive notables. Hired Killer with 7% increased maximum life, uh, a bit of mana reservation efficiency, our effect if you want, uh, more life, crit chance of attack, um, some penetration, uh, movement speed, uh, more movement speed, crit chance of attack damage, uh, quick step, even more movement speed, uh, finesse, 
you got the idea, right? Uh, this is very, very powerful. You should really get it. And um, uh, then you have the combination between Forbidden Flesh and Forbidden Flame. You have different passive notables that you want there. Uh, you want you might get the focal point mark. Uh, focal point is an ascendancy notable from uh, Daylight. Uh, it provides 70% uh, increased effect of your marks and 25% less damage taken uh, from enemies around your marked enemy. Uh, then we got Nature's Boon, which increases your flask effect on magic flasks by 30% and Nature's Adrenaline, which is very good against bosses because it gives you one flask charge uh, uh, every, um, every second, basically. This is very, very good. Uh, as a Watcher's Eye, uh, we want to get a Triple uh, Modifier 1 uh, from the Uber Elder. Uh, this one that I had uh, has very, two very powerful modifiers, which are base critical strike chance while affected by hatred and 45 crit multi while affected by precision. Uh, this modifier is now legacy, you can get up to 30%. The other two jewels uh, are Conqueror's Potency, which was recently uh, removed from the game. Uh, you can find this on trade only. Uh, it was very powerful because it provided 8% increased flask effect and some more effect to your course and your auras. Uh, a natural instinct is not legacy, it is still droppable uh, and it should be located in this section of the tree uh, so that you can get the bonuses from all of these small passives here. They are really, really powerful. Uh, I think this is the best target to get uh, increased reservation efficiency and corrupted blood since this item is not legacy and you have uh, infinite stock of it. For, uh, the rest, for the missing sockets, you can put in uh, a jewel from the TFT shop, Hypnotic Hope. Uh, this is a synthesized Viridian jewel with a lot of crit multi, elemental damage, attack speed and 7% uh, increased maximum life. Uh, to be honest, this is a very cheap craft, so you should also try to get it uh, yourself without mirroring it. Mirroring jewel is uh, more like a meme, you know? So now let me quickly describe the passive tree. This is rather straightforward. We start from the ranger uh, area, uh, we get some dexterity, we pick these notables here. This is useful for strength and intelligence. Uh, this is some nice life and stun avoidance. Uh, Charisma is great because it provides increased mana reservation efficiency, with, which we really, really need. Uh, I already mentioned the importance of Trade of Hope. Uh, the massive ring allows to keep many, to pick many uh, useful notables. Uh, going on the right, we find the first wheel about flasks. This one provides a few flask effect, but a lot of uh, uh, flask charges. Um, here we have the new passive notable, multi-shot, attacks fire an additional projectile, and I really like the attack mastery. Nearby enemies are intimidated while we, while we have rage, and we always have rage due to the gloves, the implicit gain one rage on hit with attacks. Uh, here is the first clusters with the two medium inside. Uh, going up, we can get this little life here some intelligence up to the second cluster jewel uh, which is on top remember to get very good stats on your cluster jewels because they will be your source of chaos resistances uh, if you can't manage to perma sustain your elemental flasks uh, you might need to get elemental resistances instead of chaos resistance on the clusters now to the opposite direction, we can go down. Here is our ins a natural instinct. We already spoke about that before. Uh, the bow wheel is very, very powerful. And uh, the bow mastery is a mistake. Increases the reductions to projectile speed also apply to damage with bows. And we have a lot of projectile speed from the mirrored quiver by TFT. Um, here is the second wheel about flasks. This increases flask effect duration, uh, as well as providing 10% increased effect of flasks. Um, 
Lethality is very powerful for crit chance and crit multiplier. And finally, we have the third um, large cluster jewels. Mm. Point blank, I didn't take it. Uh, this might be great if you are if you like to have a more melee oriented approach, uh, like uh, shooting from very close. But I remind you that uh, tornado shot as a skill inherently shoots uh, on a great distance because you first use the primary projectiles, uh, then they release the secondary projectiles, and so they cover a very very wide distance. Um, I think that um, keeping uh, far shot and dropping um, the point blank is completely fine. Uh, if you want a more balanced approach, sure, take both point blank and fire shot. Or if you want to maximize close damage, just go for point blank. So now about the skill gems. Uh, your main damaging setup should be inside your chest so that you can get socketed attacks at minus 15 total mana cost, uh, which is great, and level 1 maim. Um, we have Anomalous Tornado Shot. Uh, Anomalous is very good to get physical conversion. You, we have Awakened Fork. Now, uh, this might seem an unusual choice. People mostly use Chain, but my point is you have, like... 13 projectiles with your Dying Sun. That's a whole lot of projectiles on your screen, and whenever you use Fork, you're basically splitting every secondary projectile into two, which means your screen is basically completely covered by projectiles. So you don't really need chain to hit things. Uh, fork is just incredible as it is. Uh, then we have Awakened Elemental Damage, Trinity, and uh, item quantity and item rarity. Now, item quantity is uh, a legacy gem. It doesn't drop anymore, so it's the most expensive gem that you'll buy uh, in your PO experience. Uh, if you don't want to use item rarity and item quantity, if you need more damage, for example, to run bosses, feel free to put in Awakened Vicious Projectiles and Inspiration Support. We fit our auras inside the bow. And uh, we have Hatred, which provides 26% of physical damage as extra cold, Diversion Purity of Elements, which is really, really crucial because it provides elemental resistances, immunity to all element uh, ailments, and a bit of damage penetration, which never hurts. Uh, Hell of Purity is nice. Uh, the Sentinels can taunt enemies uh, thanks to the anomalous quality. Uh, then we got Anomalous Petrified Bloat, that, re that uh, allows to uh, reserve some uh, mm, life uh, on the top of our health pool. Uh, then we got Determination for extra armor, uh, so it makes, it, uh, it makes us a bit punkier. And then the very expensive Awakened Enlightened Support, level 5. Uh, since we use Petrified Blood, uh, as I mentioned, we can use the Arrogance Support Gem to, reser to reserve Defiance Banner and Divergent Precision inside, uh, inside our life. Uh, as for the Helmet, uh, we got Divergent Dash. Uh, divergent is great because uh, it grants phasing for two, for 2 seconds. Then we have Anomalous Second Wind, uh, so that support non-instant skills such as dash can have plus two cooldown. Um, the second wind also applies to Anomalous Enduring Cry, which is basically a life potion on steroids. Uh, it regenerates 2000 life over one second. This is very useful to get endurance charges, but also to tank some degen effect that might happen during maps or on, on or in uh, uh, phases uh, of certain bosses. Uh, finally, Anomalous Molten Shell. Uh, this is great to bind to your left click uh, so that you can basically activate it uh, every other time. I'm not up to that uh, just yet. It is uh, basically a good defensive tool to add some extra, uh, some extra armor. Uh, in the boots, we have Sniper's Mark and Divergent Mark on it, uh, so that we can spam Sniper's Mark at will on rares and uniques. Uh, 
Blood Rage is optional, some players like it, some don't because it applies the gen effect. Even though the trade-off is great, it uh, grants 20% attack speed, 25% chance to gain a friend's charge on kill. Uh, it is also very useful because when you are at full life, uh, the issue is that your Divination Distillate will stop running. But if you have Blood Rage on, as you can see, the Degen effect will counterbalance the Divination Distillate effect, so it can always stay up uh, and your life will not replenish to full. Uh, this is a very nice tech uh, to sustain the Divination Distillate. So here we are, uh, we prepared this map to test our build. A T16 Crimson Temple map with six modifiers, beyond five Delirium Orbs, and as you see, four Wind Scarabs for maximum juice, as well as elevated sextant. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is a very expensive map to run. I think about uh, at least two, three Divine Orbs uh, in Scarabs and elevated sextant. Most of the price come comes from those uh, juicing ailments. Now we have Alva and the Abyss mod on the map device and we can get started. So first off, these maps are incredibly hard. Uh, clear speed at start seems kinda slow because you need to build some headhunter stacks uh, we're talking about 100% Delirium on a Magic Find as a solo player. This is not something you're gonna do anytime in a league, uh, at least not playing without an Aura Bot. Um, this map has a lot of rare monsters, a lot of beyond monsters, and that's why uh, we proceed slowly. But then, as soon as we keep going, uh, you'll see that the the pace of the build really increases a lot. Uh, there is a lot of juice in the map, uh, you can see the abysses, and uh, I'm using a very, very strict filter here. Uh, like, this is hiding uh, uh, most, uh, most single currency pieces, uh, only stacked currency is shown. Um, These maps are very, very dense and uh, Tornado Shot is a very laggy skill. If you want something a bit smoother, maybe try some Lightning Arrow with the Vengeance Cascade Anoint. Uh, that can be very good. Uh, this was the Beyond Boss dropping the Tainted Currency. Uh, sadly, after you killed the boss uh, uh, for Beyond, uh, no more Beyond Monsters will be found. Gone. Uh, the altars are very good to increase Just your loot uh, and they scale difficulty quite a lot but I never had an issue uh, by uh, picking the wrong altars like uh, whatever you pick you are always uh, able to clear the map nonetheless um, there are not really threatening mods uh, that you can pick from the altars Alvas are also a good source of monsters. Good job, Exile. These maps uh, are a bit like gambling because uh, the profit is not extremely consistent. We are spending quite a bit for the maps and that means that in some maps we are not making back the entire investment while in some other maps we are making much more than the investment like if you get a T0 unique and a headhunter a badge block that can totally happen uh, even though rare uh, and that will skyrocket your profit per hour uh, if you use softwares like um, let's say Excellence and um, Keep in mind that T1 drops, Divination Cars, that nice, uh, they, they drop every, every now and then, uh, but whenever you drop them, you are going to be really, really happy. And I think this strategy with uh, 
gathering wings and uh, a lot of small passives really helps to get uh, the maximum amount of monsters. Generally speaking, we are getting a lot of delirium rewards as well. Uh, you can use the sextant for 100% more delirium rewards. That can work just nice. And uh, I think the delirium orbs for the divination cards is one of the best um, because it drops a lot of, of those stack decks. Uh, in standard, about 100 of them sell for one divine. And uh, I think we get about 60, 70 per month. So yeah, just in time. We cover the cost of the lithium orbs just by selling stack decks. Dark Ralph is a card that you can get from uh, the currency, the lithium rewards. It can pro it uh, rewards you with uh, uh, influenced chaos orbs. I'm not up to that just yet. Oh, and this is uh, a goblin for scarabs. Uh, the loot explosion wasn't that big, but we already, but we still got two winged, uh, which is nice. Just in time. So yeah. That's pretty much uh, what there is to see from the uh, from the mapping setup. Uh, I think it's very very cool to map like this. Uh, even as a solo player, you can have a lot of fun. Next, I will show you some bosses. Starting with the Uber I Elder. Uber Uber Elder rot, spoil Influenced by Maven fester. by the way Exile do something real and mortal flesh is so Again I don't have the full build uh, that all the mirrored gear I listed so damage might be higher The bullet phase is uh, really a bit of a hell uh, very few builds can tank it without dying. Uh, sometimes you can survive if you have some lucky dodges or uh, or if you don't get hit uh, by manual dodge. But yeah, that part of the fight is really annoying and the, the only real fight that you can't really survive in my opinion. Of course, being mechanically aware uh, and skilled is a big part to your survivability in these uh, very dangerous sites. No matter your gear, you're gonna get one-shotted uh, in some cases. Getting experience in the fight is very important. Uh, my personal advice is to always uh, kite around the Shaper in such a way that he won't that you always see when he shoots the balls. If you are very far from the shaper, the issue is that you don't see from where the balls come. And the shaper balls are extremely deadly. The same you can tell about the elder, uh, the ice spears are extremely deadly, so you should always kite in circles around the two bosses. The portal phase is very useful to replenish your flasks, even though you should sustain them just fine with the right setup that I showed you. I'm not up to that just yet. This is the kiting around the shaper that I mentioned earlier. Life is so brittle. Embraced by misery. Kalin strike is really useful against shaper. I really must have all of the special combatants. The artifact about this battle uh, is that it is full of faces, so you have to fight both bosses together. Uh, yeah. Let's see if he drops something good. Not really, just the disintegrator stuff. The Fiat is another great boss to run, very profitable. And. Uh, this is another encounter that not many builds can run, and uh, especially in magic fine builds, you're not supposed 
to play this in a magic fight. The most difficult boss is Chayulas, because chaos damage is very hard. But as you can see, the fight overall is pretty smooth because we have a lot of damage. And that's it. So that's it guys, thank you for staying with me until the end of this video. Um, this was uh, a very fun video for me because I really loved min maxing my build in the standard. And uh, if you liked the content that you watched, please give a like and uh, subscribe to my channel. This really helps out. Uh, in the next session of uh, my Magic Find Guide series, uh, I think I will talk about farming strategies specifically dedicated to Magic Find and about loot filters. So stay tuned for more content.